Lawyers in 3L seeking employment are facing tough times. Law firm cutbacks have wreaked havoc on lawyers' career plans and left many wondering what to do next. This is a time to get out, be with people. 70% of all jobs come through networking. Use this as an opportunity to move from where you were to where you want to be. American Law Institute, American Bar Association, Continuing Professional Education, and NALP, the Association for Legal Career Professionals, present Managing a Legal Career Transition in Tough Times, a free online broadcast for lawyers and law students in career transition, featuring Marsha Pennington Shannon and Susan G. Manch, principals of Shannon and Manch LLP, leaders in career counseling and outplacement for lawyers and law firms. Ali Abba and Nalp thank Shannon and Manch LLP for its generous donation and time and talent for this broadcast. Hi, welcome to Managing a Legal Career Transition in Tough Times. I'm Marcia Pennington Shannon, and this is my colleague, Sue Manch. Sue and I are both very pleased and proud to be part of this very important project. We know these are difficult times for job seekers. But Sue and I have a lot of experience helping lawyers in transition, and we've learned a lot about this marketplace. We'd like to share with you what we've learned that we think might be helpful to you and give you some steps in organizing and conducting an effective job search. Therefore, our agenda for today is to talk a little bit about the current market, as well as to talk about uh, the five basic steps to an effective job search. In addition, we'd like to talk about other considerations as well, financial, emotional, and certainly other things that you want to think about in the job market. As we begin, let's look at the state of the market. I'm going to use a very technical economic term. It's lousy. There's no doubt that any, anybody that's involved in the, the marketplace right now knows it's a very difficult one. But it's not impossible. Lawyers are still getting jobs. They are securing positions particularly in small and medium-sized firms right now, in federal government, and in even in-house positions. There are other employers hiring as well, but those tend to be the ones that are hiring the most right now. In this particular market, there's no doubt that you need to be flexible, persistent, proactive, and creative, more so than in any other marketplace. I've been working with lawyers in transition for 25 years, and certainly those four attributes are so much more important in this particular market. While employers continue to hire, many are not advertising their positions. So we will be emphasizing, and perhaps you can't overemphasize, the fact that networking is extremely important in this. Whether you're a third-year law student or you've been practicing for 20 years, you really want to discover job opportunities through the networking process. Your job search is about marketing a particularly unique and valuable product, and that's you. It's very important that you approach this process by understanding what you bring to the table and then be able to articulate that to employers. With these things in mind, let's start walking through the five basic steps of a job search. Step one is self-assessment. There's no doubt that an effective job search always starts with your own self-awareness. It is essential in this particular job search that you be able to articulate your strengths, your skills, your experiences that are relevant to a particular employer. In addition, many individuals are taking this opportunity to really reassess the direction of their careers, both within the traditional practice of law and outside in alternative careers. How do you go about doing that? Well, first, you want to start by asking yourself several questions. Those questions include, what do I value? What's important to me? What motivates me? What skills do I possess and I really enjoy using? What do I enjoy doing? What am I most, when am I most successful and satisfied? And what kind of environment do I need to thrive? Those are really important questions. And in doing each one, you're really taking a look at a profile for yourself, factors that become important in what you want to do next. Again, first, consider your values. Um, values are our motivators. Values are the reasons we want to get up and go to work in the morning. 
consider your skills and knowledge and experience, not just within your jobs, but also outside your, your outside activities. Identify your essential talents. Are you creative? Are you a good problem solver? Do you like connecting with people? And you may want to take some career-related inventories, like the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Uh, there's a wonderful book called Do What You Are, based on the Myers-Briggs, and it's very, very helpful for those who are looking for different careers, as well as, again, career satisfaction factors. The Strong Interest Inventory is another good inventory. That one is looking at your interests and how those match into all sorts of different careers. One last part of the assessment process should be your own parameters. What kind of salary do you need? What kind of geographic location? What kind of hours do you want to work? What kind of commute do you want to have? As you look at those, be as realistic as possible, especially given this marketplace. And as you do step two in the process, you'll be using that information. Sue? All right, so now that you've thought about what you like, what you care about, what's important to you, and some of the framework that will guide your search, you can start to think about the world of work a little bit more specifically. And this is a great time to begin uh, doing some identification and research work. Now, I want to start by saying there's both passive and active phases in the identification and research phase. And for those of you who are feeling a little shell-shocked about where you find yourselves today, you might want to begin with the passive phase. You know, take some time to think about what you want, uh, invest some time in the assessment process that Marcia has described, but also you can begin doing your research that will help inform the decisions you're going to make about the more active phases of your job search. First and foremost, you want to think about what's available in the broadest possible sense. You know, when we find ourselves here in April of 2009 in a job market that, as Marcia tells us, is lousy, we need to think really broadly and creatively. We need to put ourselves in a position where we can really blue sky it and imagine what is possible, not just, you know, what was the job that I thought I was going to get when I went to law school or how do I get a job just like the one I just had. This is going to take some creativity, but the good news is there are lots of resources. So first, let's think about the, the kinds of employers on a 30,000-foot view. You've got your traditional legal employers. You know, as you, can, as you know, there's firms, uh, but not just big firms. If you just came out of a big firm, this is a great time to begin researching what it's like to work in a smaller firm or a mid-sized firm or what it means to be a solo practitioner uh, or whether there's a boutique that does something that you really like that might offer a different type of work environment and might be have a different level of busyness right now. There's also in-house opportunities. One of the things we know about a down market is that greater demands are placed on in-house counsel and therefore they need more support, they need more people, and when they're sending less business out it means there may not be less legal work, they're just doing it in-house rather than sending it to their external counsel. So there are opportunities there and they span the whole range of industry. So lots of good research to be done there to learn more about what in-house counsel jobs look like and where they might be. Public interest is often something that law students showed an interest in, either as uh, undergraduates or in law school, um, but then sometimes move away from when they get into the active uh, practice or in a, in a job in a firm. This is a great opportunity for you to explore whether there's a nexus between some of your real passions uh, that you cared about in law school, community, uh, interest uh, organizations, and a job. So this is a good time to think about what you care about, what you value, and whether there's some way to join those things with your world of work. Public service is also an opportunity. Uh, we know that as the economy gets worse, the government gets bigger. Uh, that's good news for job seekers. There are lots of regulators. There are lots of prosecutors. There are um, jobs in all phases of government, state, local, federal, uh, who are in building mode at this point to try to help citizens of the country deal with the crisis that we are in in the economy. So this is a great time to think about whether public service is right for you.